Today I'm going to be taking a look at a Linux distribution that I've never looked at before. I've actually never heard of until just recently. I discovered this over on DistroWatch. So on DistroWatch, I noticed that kind of high in their page hit rankings is WattOS. And WattOS, again, I'd never heard of it. Apparently it is a Debian-based distribution. I love Debian. It uses LXDE for its desktop. I like LXDE. LXDE uses the OpenBox window manager. You guys know OpenBox is one of my favorite window managers so i'm pretty excited to check this thing out it had a release just a few months back uh, november 2022 was their last release watt os r12 was the release and before that they had not had a release since way back in 2016 so for a number of years this was a dormant project so that's probably why i hadn't heard of it before and you know with that release back in november the project is now active again and there it's not just a one-off release I actually checked their sites are already planning on the next release of WattOS so people are actively working on this distribution and the fact that it uses Debian and OpenBox I'm pretty excited so I'm going to spin up a virtual machine and take a look at WattOS R12. So I've downloaded the ISO and created a VM here so let's go ahead and boot into the live environment. And we boot directly into the LXDE desktop environment so I'm going to go ahead and Let's go ahead and run through the installation process. So looks like they're going to use the Calamaris installer. One thing I notice, uh, the resolution. Now, of course, I'm in a VM. I sh probably should change the resolution, the screen resolution. But I noticed it's very, very, very small. So I'm going to click on monitor settings. And when I say the resolution is very small, actually, the screen resolution is big, but it, it's shrunk and the font size is really small. It looks like the default resolution is 1920 by 1440. That's kind of an odd resolution to set as a default for a VM, right? That's, yeah, so I'm going to choose a more sane 1920 by 1080. Yeah, I'm assuming that was to satisfy uh, the developer. He probably uses that particular resolution on his equipment. So, uh, but yeah, probably for most general computer users, uh, you probably want to set that to a, a better resolution to, as a default for a virtual machine. So now the Calamari's installer, I can actually read it. Let me move it over away from my head. And American English is the language. So let's go ahead, click next. It has not correctly chosen the central time zone in the US for me. It's chosen the Eastern time zone. So let me find somewhere in the central time zone and then I'll click next. Uh, English US is the default keyboard. That's correct for me. And then do we want to erase the disk and give the entire virtual hard drive of this virtual machine to WattOS or do we want to manually partition the drive? I'm just going to go ahead and let it do the automatic partitioning. Well, I say that I'm actually not going to do the automatic partitioning because <laughs> WattOS, it looks like by default, it's going to give nine gigs essentially of my 25 gig virtual hard drive over to a swap partition that is absolutely insane i'm not going to do that so we're definitely going to do the manual partitioning so let's go into the manual partition let's see if i remember how to manually partition something using the calamaris installer let's do new partition table and master boot record is fine for the vm here i'm going to have 25 gigs of free space let's go ahead and create something on that we're going to create a primary partition extend for file system the mount point the mount point should probably be slash right it should be root and then we need to enable the boot flag and then hit OK, and I'm actually not going to bother creating a swap for the VM. There's no point, but if you needed to create a swap, then you would obviously not give the entire space of that drive to that partition. You'd save, you know, four gigs or whatever if you were doing this on physical hardware. Save a few gigs for a swap partition and then create the swap. But again, it's just wasted space in a VM, so I'm not going to do the swap. Now it's asking about creating a username and password. So DT is my username. I called the VM here. What OS dash vert. And then let's give a strong and complicated password to the DT user and then repeat the strong and complicated password and then log in automatically without asking for a password that's not ticked on i'm going to leave that not ticked on i want to be I want to be forced to enter a password to enter all my computers for privacy reasons and then next when we get our summary location good keyboard good partition scheme looks good just going to click install 
and typically this portion of the installer takes about five to ten minutes on my hardware so I'm going to step away make a cup of coffee I'll be back once the installation has completed and wow that installation actually only took about two maybe three minutes like this thing installed very quickly so I'm assuming that it's pretty minimal out of the box it probably doesn't install a lot of programs so I'm gonna go ahead and restart now you can see the checkbox here that's already ticked on leave that ticked on click done and it should reboot the VM and press enter to continue and it should detach the ISO automatically for me and it does and now we boot into our freshly installed Watt OS R12 and we get to our login screen here so my user was DT let's enter his super secure password and once again, the screen resolution defaults to 1920 by 1440. This, you know, it makes the text very, very small here in the VM. But we can fix this. And this time when I fix it, it will be permanent. Because now we're actually changing the resolution on the installed Watt OS. Before, when I changed it, it was temporary because we were inside a live environment. So that was just a one-time fix. But now, you can tell it to save that and now every time I load this VM it'll remember to default to 1920 by 1080 for the resolution. Now without going through the menu system yet I can already tell you because of the installation process because I've installed so many Linux distributions on this machine hundreds of them the fact that it, that installer took like two minutes there's not going to be much in this menu system I guarantee you that if I go into the menu system let's see yeah there is not very many programs installed on this thing so that's kind of nice if you like to install your own programs anyway and you, a lot of distributions they just install a suite of applications because they think that you know they'll, they'll pick and choose the right applications for the general public most computer users they really don't care what text editor is there what web browser is there or what music player is there but if you're like me you have your favorites of all of these particular kinds of programs I don't mind that it ships not a lot out of the box because I'll install my own audio player and video player and text editor and whatever it happens to be so under the accessories category we have mouse pad which is a plain text editor it's the default plain text editor for the xfce desktop environment that's strange that they included that because leafpad is the text editor for the lxde desktop environment which they're actually using lxd but they probably chose mouse pad because maybe mouse pad is a little better of a plain text editor. I don't know. I, I, I really haven't used Mousepad or Leafpad that much. Then we have a screenshot tool. Uh, take screenshot. This looks like GNOME screenshot utility. It is. Screenshot 3.38.0. I thought I recognized. Yeah. Which the GNOME, uh, the new GNOME screenshot tool is actually really nice. I, I can understand why they included that. Vim is installed out of the box. Yay, right? <laughs> Xarchiver is our archive tool for zip and unzip and tar gz and all of that stuff. Under graphics, there's nothing here. The document viewer, that's your PDF viewer, which let's see which one they're using. Looks like they're using uh, GNOMES. That's what I think this is. Oh, I don't have any about information here, but you know what? You can always get a program if for whatever reason a program doesn't give you like an about screen or anything to actually give you that information. Just open a terminal and type xprop for x properties xprop. It's a command line utility. Your cursor is going to turn into an x. Click on the window that you want the X properties for. So I'm going to click on that window and you can see that that program is actually org.gnome.events so that's gnome's events that is the uh, pdf viewer part of the default suite of gnome applications also under graphics we have gthumb which i don't i haven't played with gthumb before it is a uh, photo organizer it looks like a photo manager an image viewer it's essentially what it is it's for gnome okay well that would make sense why it's called gthumb if it's a gnome application uh, again i'm not familiar with gthumb i don't think i've ever used it firefox esr is the default browser uh, it's firefox esr that's the extended support release of firefox if i go to help and about firefox you can see this is firefox esr 102.4.0 now keep in mind this iso was released five months ago right back in november of 2022 i'm sure there's a lot of updates i could take i'm not going to do that on camera but it's based on debian so uh, you're not it's not going to be like a rolling release where like the whole system is going to have an update probably you just 
this, the things that are really important for security reasons. I bet there's some minor point updates for the web browser, for the kernel, maybe a couple of other applications, but it's not, it's not going to be like a Arch Linux update. Like if you downloaded uh, an Arch based distribution and the ISO was five months old, you would probably have more than a thousand updates, right? It's not going to be like that on a Debian based system. Also under the internet category, we have Transmission, which is GNOME's BitTorrent client. Uh, it's actually a really fantastic BitTorrent client, Transmission. I, I install it on all of my machines. Under Office, we have nothing here. The PDF viewer is here, but uh, nothing else. So no LibreOffice. Again, if you want LibreOffice, go install it. They're trying to keep this, obviously, they're trying to keep this minimal, right? That is the whole idea. They purposely didn't install any large programs other than Firefox. There's nothing installed here that you can say is like a big, heavy program. And obviously, they're using LXDE, which uses the open box window manager. So it's going to be really light, really fast, really low on system resource usage, which is going to be perfect for those of you that have underpowered machines or older hardware. If you're looking for a distribution for a machine like that, maybe Watt OS would be appropriate. Under sound and video, pulse audio volume control is here, of course, uh, and then VLC is your media player, which makes sense. VLC is a fantastic video player. It also can play audio as well, so it can actually serve a dual purpose. That way, they didn't have to install two different programs, an audio player and a video player. VLC works fantastically at both. Under System Tools, of course, PC Man FM is the file manager. You guys have seen PC Man FM on practically most of my videos, right? Because PC Man FM is the file manager that I actually install on uh, my host machines. You know, anytime you've seen me open up a, a GUI file manager on camera, I'm always using PC Man FM. And partly the reason I use PC Man FM is because in the early days of Linux, I fell in love with the open box window manager, which was often used on the LXDE desktop environment, and PC Man FM is the default file manager for LXDE. That's kind of how I discovered PC Man FM. We have the GDebi package installer, and what this is, this is a program that allows you to install Debian packages, .deb files. So if you go to the internet and find a .deb package, how do you install that. Well, GDebian will do it for you. So that's for installing those uh, Debian packages, those third-party Debian packages that are not in the repo. You know, there's a random Debian package you find on the internet, which you really should be careful about installing those, but sometimes it is necessary. We have Gparted here, which is a partition editor, partition manager. It's not something that you really need on a, a, a installed distribution, right? It's good to have in the live environment because people need to partition a drive in a live environment before the installation. But once a, a distribution has been properly installed, you probably shouldn't keep Gparted around because new to Linux users might get in there and play with that thing and not realize that they could completely hose their system by playing with Gparted. HTOP is installed out of the box. And I've opened a lot of things here in the last few minutes, so system resource usage might be a little high here, but 332 megabytes with the six gigs of RAM that I gave this machine, so really, really light. So uh, that is the beauty of using something like LXDE with OpenBox. Also under system tools, we have LX Terminal is our terminal. So let me actually open the LX Terminal. And let me zoom in, let's do a uname. Dash R. The kernel they're on is 5.10. It makes sense you'd be on an older kernel being Debian based, right? This, again, we're not on a rolling system here. Now let me run apt list dash dash installed and get a list of all the programs that were installed out of the box line by line here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rerun that command and I'm going to pipe it into WC space dash L. WC is the word count program. Dash L, that flag is a line count flag. So how many lines of output were in that command? 1,440. So that is the number of packages that Watt OS installs out of the box because I haven't installed anything else. So that is just what was installed in the default installation. Getting back into the menu system, under the preferences category, we have a lot of your standard 
preference settings, things that you would see for your typical desktop environment. Customize look and feel. That's going to be the LX Appearance Program, which is a, a program I install on all of my systems when I do standalone window managers, tiling window managers. I use a lot of the LXDE program, so I use LX Appearance. This allows you to change the GTK theme and the icon theme. It's typically what you would use LX Appearance for. Now, uh, you have to understand let me open a window. Uh, changing the GTK theme changes the window, right? But it doesn't change the title bar theme because the part here, the top, the title bar, that is controlled by OpenBox, the window manager. It has its own theming. And if I go into the menu system, go into preferences, there is the OpenBox configuration manager. And you would select, you know, whatever OpenBox theme. And that would change the actual title bars of the windows. Other than that, on the panel, we have our sys tray, we have our clock, we have a screen locking icon, and we have a logout icon. Pretty standard panel. All right? If you've ever used any panel in any traditional desktop environment, or if you've ever used Windows, Mac, you'll know how to use the LXDE panel. Now let me right click on the desktop. I'm going to go into desktop preferences, and let's see if there are any other wallpapers to choose from other than this beach, because I mean, it's a nice wallpaper, but let's just see what else is here. Uh, let's see. That actually, yeah, that that is nice because it's a little darker. That would look good with a lighter theme, like a lighter color panel. So they do have a, a few things to choose from. That's just the Watt OS logo splash. Let's see what this is. This is just uh, like a starry night. And then wall is the name of this one. And it's some mountains. Yeah, not much here for wallpapers, but honestly, I'd probably just go back to that second one that I chose. That's probably the best out of the three or four um, nature photography wallpapers that they have. Overall, Watt OS R12 looks like a pretty solid release. I'm, I'm excited that I found a new distribution to hopefully keep track of in the future because again, Debian like Debian. Um, OpenBox, I like OpenBox, right? And it's actually using the full LXDE desktop environment, which you don't see a lot of distributions used now because LXDE, it kind of died a few years ago. And now I think it sees some development now. You do, you still have some distributions that'll ship LXDE, but it is kind of been left behind. And I think that's unfortunate because it was always one of my favorite full desktop environments in the early days of Linux when I first switched. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Maxim, Mahomes, Too Bald, Matt, Mimit, Mitchell, Royal, Paul, Wes, Armor, Dragon, Bash, Chuck, Commander, Angry, George, Lee, Marstrom, Methos, Nader, Jan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Tools, Devler, Willie, and Zenobit. These guys, all these names, these are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Watt OS R12 would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys. I love a distribution that only installs the bare essentials, like Vim and HTOP.